Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 9, Duality and Post-Optimality Analysis. Previously in lesson 8, we have discussed about one of the advantages of duality, that is finding the solutions of the linear programming problem. Instead of using the primal problem, we have used the dual to find out the solution or the optimal solutions of the primal problem. By the way, one of the advantages of duality is to find out the solution of the primal. Instead of finding the solution for the primal, it is also possible to find the solutions of the dual. So when we find the solutions of the dual, we already get the solutions of the primal. And now we will discuss about post-optimality analysis using duality. So here our learning objective is to apply duality for post-optimality analysis or sensitivity analysis. Post-optimality analysis means examining the changes after the optimal solution has been reached. The analysis can be done or the analysis does not begin until the optimal solution to the original linear program problem has been obtained. So first of all, we have to solve, we have to find out the optimal solution for the linear program. Once we solve it, once we obtain the optimal solutions of the linear programming, so we can conduct post-optimality analysis. For this reason, sensitivity analysis is often referred to as post-optimality analysis. Post-optimality analysis because we conduct an the analysis after getting the optimal solution. After getting the optimal solution. After a linear program problem has been solved, we determine the range of changes that will affect the optimal solution in the primal problem. This is done without solving the whole problem again. Once we found the optimal solution, so we will analyze how much the range of changes affect or how much the range of changes cannot affect the optimal solution in the primal linear programming without just solving the whole problem again. Let's see some of the applications of post-optimality or sensitivity analysis. Using sensitivity analysis, you can answer the following questions. How will a change in the coefficient of the objective function affect the optimal solutions? How sensitive is the optimal solution to changes in profit, resource, or other input parameters? And the other is, what if the profit increases by 10% after getting the optimal solution? How this 10% profit increases affect the optimal solutions? What if less money is available in the advertising budget constraints? What if the new technology reduces time, so can it affect the optimal solution? How will a change in the right-hand side value of the constraints, or we can say the resources, affect the optimal solution? So such type of managerial questions can be answered by conducting post-optimality analysis. Let's do one example which shows how it can answer such type of questions. This is a maximization max maximization of z equals 50 x1 plus 40 x2 such that 3 x1 plus 5 x2 less than or equal to 150 which is an assembly time x2 is less than or equal to 20 which is portable display 8 x1 plus 5 x2 less than or equal to 300 where warehouse capacity and this is the non-negativity that is x1 and x2 greater or equal to 0 where x1 is the number of units of desktop and x2 is the number of units of laptop. If, if the profit contribution of desktop varies, by the way, the profit contribution of desktop is 50, 50 per unit from a single desktop, we can get 50 unit profit. And from single laptop, we can get 40. So if the profit contribution of desktop varies, how much is the sensitivity of the optimality? So, before conducting this post-optimality analysis, we have to 
find out the optimal solution of this maximization problem using simplex method using simplex method by the way we have discussed about how to solve the linear programming using simplex method in the previous lessons so the final simplex table for this high tech problem is as follows so if this table is the final optimal table the final optimal table and the value of x1 is 30 and x2 is 12 and z will be 1980 as you see x2 is 12 and s2 is 8 x1 is 30 and z is 1980 since it is a maximization all the values of cj minus zj is less than or equal to zero so optimality is arrived or optimality is achieved here so the solutions are this so now if we change if the profit contribution of desktop changes that is if 50 changes that is the coefficients of the objective function so what will happen in the optimal solution let's move to let's move to the next let's compute the range of optimality for c1 let's replace the profit contribution per unit of desktop from 50 to c1 from 50 to c1 using c1 instead of 50 as objective function coefficient of x1 the final simplex table is as follows so the final simplex table by the way changing an objective function coefficient will result change in zj and cj minus zj but not in the variable values it only changes the zj and cj minus zj because when we calculate cj zj we multiply this column this cb column with the corresponding x1 x2 x s1 s2 s3 columns so when we let's look 40 times 0 0 times 0 c1 times 1 so we put it c1 and 40 times 1 0 times 0 c1 times 0 so it becomes 40 and the same is true so only zj and cg minus zj can be affected or are affected when the 50 that is the profit contribution of desktop 50 is changed with that of or replaced with c1 so once we get this once we get cj minus zj we know that we know that for optimal for optimum solution for optimum solution the cj minus zj values should be less than or equal to zero for maximization linear programming problem thus thus from this cj minus zj these two values c1 minus 64 over 5 and 24 minus c1 over 5 should be both should be less than or equal to both should be less than or equal to zero for optimal or for optimum solution so c1 minus 64 over 5 less than or equal to zero so when we uh, rearrange this equation so c1 minus 64 less than or equal to zero so it becomes c1 less than or equal to 64 c1 less than or equal to 64 can make it to be optimal or we can say or we can say 64 is greater than or equal to c1 and from the other column s3 column we have 24 minus c1 over 5 less than or equal to 5 when we rearrange this 24 minus c1 less than or equal to 0 and it gives us 24 less than or equal to c1 or combining the two combining the two that is c1 becomes in between 24 and 64 because here we get here we get 64 is greater than or equal to c1 or we can say c1 is less than or equal to 64 so this is the upper bound for c1 and 
here 24 is less than or equal to c1 or c1 is greater than or equal to c1 uh, 64 so this is the range of optimality if c1 varies within this range within starting from 24 up to 64 so the optimal solution is the same the optimality is not affected the optimality is not affected so c1 can vary from 50 up to 64 and from 50 up to 24 without affecting the optimal solution without affecting the optimal solution and x1 is 30 and x2 is 12 and z will be z will be c1 as you see here z is this one 480 plus 30 c1 so 480 plus 30 c1 so the z also varies according to the, its coefficient according to the coefficient the z can also varies let's do one more example on post-optimality analysis using duality by the way previously we have discussed just the post-optimality analysis without applying the duality but here we have to apply duality for post-optimality analysis example a company wants to produce three products a b and c the unit profit on these products are four six and two respectively these products require two types of resources manpower and raw material the linear program model formulated for determining the optimal product mix is as follows the primal problem it is a maximization z equals 60 x1 plus 30 x2 plus 20 x3 subjected to the constraint 8 x1 plus 6 x2 plus x3 less than or equal to 40 which is lumber constraint and 4 x1 plus 2 x2 plus 1.5 x3 less than or equal to 20 which is finishing constraint and the other is 2 x1 plus 1.5 x2 plus 0.5 x3 less than or equal to 8 which is carpentry constraint and x1 x2 x3 greater than or equal to 0 which is the negativity restrictions the negative restrictions the optimal basic variable solution is found to be like this s124 x12 x3 8 and z will be 280 x1 is the number of discus x2 is the number of tables and x3 is the number of chairs number of chairs this is the optimal solutions of the primal the optimal solutions of the primal and the dual of this primal will be look like this since this maximization the dual will be minimization w equals 48 y1 plus 20 y2 plus 8 y3 subjected to the constraint 8 y1 plus 4 y2 plus 2 y3 greater than or equal to 60 this constraints 6 y1 plus 2 y2 plus 1.5 y3 greater than or equal to 30 table constraints y1 plus 1.5 y2 plus 0.5 y3 greater than or equal to 20 chair constraints y1 y2 y3 greater than or equal to zero this is the negative restrictions and the optimal solution for this dual problem is y1 equals zero y2 equals 10 y3 equals 10 and z becomes 280 which is the same with that of the primal with that of the primal and from the dual y1 is price paid to one board feet of lumber y2 is price for one finishing y3 is price for one carpentry carpentry now let's see with different cases case one if there is a change in non-basic variable of objective function coefficients we know that non-basic variables value are zero the non-basic variables of the linear programming are zero the values for the non-basic variables are zero so we know that our basic variables have the, the value which is different from zero 
and maximum of z equals 60x1 plus 30x2 plus 20x3. And x2 is non basic variables because, because its value is zero. Its value is zero from the previous uh, slide. So let's replace this 30 with c. So the new objective function will be maximum of z six, equals 60x1 plus cx2 instead of 30 plus 20x3. The quotient of the objective function c is found in the dual constraint. So this c is found in the dual constraint of 6y1 plus 2y2 plus 1.5y3 greater than or equal to 30. So instead of 30, we have to put c. So the new constraint in the dual will be 6y1 plus 2y2 plus 1.5y3 greater than or equal to c. Since the dual optimum solution is y1 equals 0, y2 equals 10, and y3 equals 10, let's replace these values, these solutions, in this constraint. When we replace 6 times 0 plus 2 times 10 plus 1.5 times 10 greater than or equal to c. That means 35 greater than or equal to c. Or we can say c less than or equal to 35. C less than or equal to 35. This means this value can be interpreted as as long as the price of the table is less than or equal to 35, the current basic variable remains optimal in which we don't produce table because x2 is non-basic variable having a value of 0. So as long as the price of the table is below or less than or equal to 35, we cannot produce table. We cannot produce. The table is only profitable if and only if the price is greater than 35. So as long as the price of the table is less than or equal to 35, the remaining basic variable remain basic and optimal. Because we don't want to produce table until the price is greater than or we don't want to produce if the price is less than or equal to 35. We only want to produce if and only if the price is greater than 35. So the basic variable remain optimal with C less than or equal to 35. We know that the value of uh, C, the value of the first value of uh, C is 30, so 30 can vary or 30 can increase up to 35 without affecting the optimal solution. Without affecting the optimal solution. Moving to the second condition, that is case two, changing the coefficients of the column of non-basic variable. X is a non-basic variable because it has a value of zero. So when we change the coefficient of x2 in the objective function from 30 to 43, from the first constraint 6 to 5, and second constraint from 2 to 2, it is 2, by the way, uh, nothing changed here, and third constraint from 1.5 to 2. So this non-basic variable is found in the constraints of the dual as 6y1, 6y1 plus 2y2 plus 1.5y3 greater than or equal to 30, 30. This is the constraints of the dual. And when we replace, when we change this non-basic variable coefficients in the dual, so 5y1, 5y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3 greater than or equal to 43. So this is the constraints of the dual with new coefficients, with new coefficients. Since the dual optimal solution has y1, y, y1 is equal to 0, y2 equals 10, y3 equals 10. So when we replace with this equation, so we get 40 greater than or equal to 43. So this is false, right? 40 is not greater than or equal to 43. So this means that it can be interpreted as the current basic variables of the primal is no more 
optimal because the duality is not feasible. It's not feasible, right? 40 is not 40 greater than or equal to 43 shows that it is infeasible. The dual is infeasible. So if the dual is infeasible or not feasible, there is no optimal solution for the prima. The current dual solution is no longer dual feasible after after the coefficient, after the non-basic variable coefficient change. Coefficient change. Thus, the new selling price 43 makes the table become worth producing. So, the non-basic variable which represents the table cannot be or can no more be non-basic variable. Let's move to the third conditions. The third case is adding the new activity that is X for footstool or another uh, equipment to be produced with a price 15 which requires one board uh, fit lumber, one finishing hour and one carpenter hour. Does the current basic variable remain optimal? Are we going to produce footstool or not? Okay, the primal Maximization z equals 60x1 plus 30x2 plus 20x3 plus 15x4. 15 represents 15 represents the price, and x4 represents x4 the number of footstool, the number of footstool. So the constraints are also changed. As you see, x4 is added to all the constraints, all the constraints. Thus, we have to find out the dual. Let's look at the dual. So, the dual for footstool constraints is found as y1 plus y2 plus y3 greater than or equal to 15. Greater than or equal to 15. Using the optimal solutions of the duality, that is y1 equals 0, y2 equals 10, y3 equals 10. Let's check. Let's replace. So 0 plus 10 plus 10 greater than or equal to 15. That is 20 is greater than or equal to 15, which is dual feasible, which is dual feasible. Thus, current dual solution is still dual feasible. Even we add a new constraint, thus current optimal basic variable for the prima remain is feasible. Thus we don't produce footstool. We don't produce footstool since the existing basic variable remains optimal. Optimal. This is the end of our discussion. Uh, try to do these exercises and if you have any question or comment you can write on the comment box below. Thank you for listening and we will meet with another discussion next time. Till then, have a good time. Bye.